Race four of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup. We're in Winterberg in Germany in the Hochsauerland, one of the oldest tracks on the circuit and one that is well known by all of our sliders. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our second and deciding heat of the women's competition. 20 sleds going for the honor of taking perhaps even a new track record in this second heat, as we saw several times in the first. I'm Martin Haven, delighted to be joined by former US slider Greg West, the track you know well, Greg, but it's a track that most know well. Doesn't mean it's easy, though. Yeah, Winterberg has, uh, as we've seen, has some definite uh, quirks to it today, and it really starts right off the top. So a pretty middle-of-the-road start ramp. We're going to see the ladies, the fast starters are in the 530 range, but then you have this thing right in front of you looks like a wall. That's corner zero. That is the entire top of the track. Like the slider we just saw in the POV do, if you tap the wall there, it really hurts your speed, and it's not something you can get back. So you have to be quiet on the sled through corner zero and one. We're gonna take a good long look at the speeds out of corner one, and you can pretty much predict what the top half of the track's gonna be like. Going through Kreisel right now. This is where the bottom of the track's really going to start. I'm sorry, Kreisel right now, I should say. We're gonna see, uh, you want smooth lines through there, not a lot of waving. And now on the exit eight, the bottom really drops out of the track. We go from about 50 miles an hour up to 80 miles an hour over the next three corners. We're gonna see some action right there on the exit of turn 11. And the fast sliders have a little flop right there on the exit of turn 13. 65 vertical feet uphill through turn 14 and a couple of victory rolls uh, for those that really let it fly. Well, I was watching that without commentary a few minutes ago, just listening to the wind whistle and around corner five or six, that's about as quick as your average learner goes on the Cresta run. And that is still slow. That's doing 35 or 40 miles an hour. I can't begin to imagine how terrifying 90 miles an hour with your head sticking out the front is. However, for these athletes, it is absolutely standard. And at those speeds, they are still calculating how they can get the best out of their sled, not whether they'll live or not. <laughs> Anna Fenster, 20th in the first heat, will be first to go in the second. The remaining seven sliders, including the Olympic bronze medalist Laura Dees, don't get a second run. We're brutal in this sport. We just slash the field to the top 20. There's Megan Henry of the USA, Alina Tororochenkova of Russia. They have all made it through into the second heat. And that is Brazil's Nicole Silveira. She's a nurse from Calgary. So you think she's been busy the last couple of years, as well as sliding in the winter? It's been a pretty busy time, what with, well, you know. Anna Fenstedt, the first off, followed by Yulia Kanakina and Alessia Kripper. We'll then go down to our final few, and maybe from Jane Channel down, that's where we'll see the medals decided and possibly some new track records too. Race for the Women's Skeleton World Cup. We are in Winterberg in Germany. Martin Haven and Greg West watching Anna Fernstedt, former German, now Czech Republic slider, 20th place. Greg, you were saying just before we came on air, has she ever been first off in the second heat in a World Cup race? And I think, no, she probably hasn't. Yeah, this is a new territory for her. 5.59 off the start ramp. So a little slower than her 5.54 in the first half. I'm looking at this track right now, though. They got a fresh sprint, so a little bit of water sprayed on it. It is shiny. Shiny means fast. So we'll see how Anna does compared to her first heat uh, time. Well, plus it's after four o'clock in the afternoon. The sun has set. The still got blue light, but the track will get faster as the air temperature drops as well. It won't get frosted. Well, Fernstedt, eighth place here last year, and she'll be doing well if she moves up even one spot in the second run. She's a tenth away from the next closest sled. She is not having the sort of season she wants. Pretty decent speed there at the bottom, 128.5. Well, she's had a bit of a, bit of a perplexed look all season. Jeff Payne helping out with the coaching there. Jeff Payne has been become a kind of small nations shared coach over the last few seasons. There's an awful lot of knowledge to draw from there. But again, Anna, well, she grew up in the German program. She knows this track well. She's an easy top 10 slider. 
Looks like she jumped on the sled maybe a little bit early there. Let's see if there was something we didn't see. I mean, that's straight into corner zero. Can't ask for much of a better entrance, but it looked like the sled just was drifting there a little bit. And when you have a deficient start time and, and then the drift out of corner zero, it really doubles down on your problems. I mean, the rest of the run, though, it, it looks good. And I said this during her first run. I think they may have guessed uh, wrong on the setup because it just didn't have the speed that we saw out of some of the other sleds. Yeah, she looks yeah, lost. It could, yeah, could well be. Well, next up, another soul who shouldn't be this far down in the order yet, Yulia Kanakina. And eighth place three seasons ago. Her best result here, she was 10th here in last year's race. 5-2-0 start, so she improves her start time on the first heat. She was 5-24 in the first heat. More importantly, she had a much better corner zero. Her first one, she was all over the place, had a big skid, and I think kicked the wall. And she has already extended to 7 tenths of a second. That is push time in corner zero right there. Well, she only had one tenth in hand over Anna Fernstedt from the first heat, and she is seven tenths in front at the Kreisel. Will she lose more on the bottom part of the track, which is where the German slide is uh, so good? She's down on speed going through turn nine, but I uh, do not think it's going to cost her seven tenths of a second. She might lose a little bit, a couple hundreds here and yeah. there, but uh, this will be your new leader, barring anything crazy happening in the next hundred feet. And across the line, 67 hundreds up, 57.08. That is the third equal fastest time of the competition so far. And if she'd done that in the first heat, she would be tied in the bronze medal position with Mimi Reneva. But she was 45 hundreds behind Mimi. So her first run was a shocker, and that's what she should have produced. Yeah, and she left a little on the table, too. We saw a little skid there, eight to nine. But the big start and then maintaining it through corner zero is where she really pulled away there. You see her down here at the bottom of the track. She's so relaxed that her legs are actually kind of falling with gravity. That's hard to do at 80 plus miles an hour. Well, that is nearly two tenths inside what the track record was overnight. Next up, Alessia Kripper tied on time with Yulia Kanakina from the first heat. Her best race result here, a 16th place finish last season. Her best ever World Cup finish, 13th in Innsbruck just a couple of weeks ago. And she started some 900 slower, so she finds a bit more pace. It'll help with that battle with the Russian. See, Krip had a 5.33 in the first heat. A little over-rotation on the load, but it stays in the grooves. 5.34, so on par. So she's got 1,400 in, in the hole, but she is a little sloppy from corner zero to corner one. You're going to hear me say it all broadcast long. That is the entire top of the track. And look at that. It already bled out to 3,600 in the hole by turn four. And that was her weakness in the first heat as well. Up to quarter five, she was very skiddy. She's a little more controlled here, but she lost so much time early on. Slowest so far. Third speed, she really needs to put it together. Now there was a mistake from Kanakina there. And a grip a little cleaner through there, but still only the third fastest speed. Yeah. And she's going to fall in one spot. Step. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, it's going to be close. She might actually drop behind Fernstedt at the line. She rolls over two hundreds in front of the Czech slider. The Italian ladies have been putting on a show the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen the bottom of both of their slides. Yes, oh, we point. have. I hope she's OK. She grabs her hip. Well, you know, you know what it's like. I've seen the bodies and the bruising and the purple and the blue and the green and all of that. You know what it feels like. You see her here on the start ramp. You're going to watch her. She's going to actually over rotate a little on the load. Her feet sway to the side. That's a lot of friction in the groove that they're pushing the sled in. And then you see a big bump on the entrance of corner zero. Tries to keep it off the wall and ends up putting it into a skid. Sometimes it's better just to take the clip. And here she's going to tap, it looks like the right rear bunk, going into turn eight or maybe just uh, knock the nose away a bit. And then, yeah, party time over the finish line. Yeah. Way to stay tucked. Yeah, backing it in, not MotoGP style.
<laughs> Keep the runners shiny side down. That's what we always say. Yeah. We never say that. Alina Tororichenkova, silver medalist last week, 17th place this week. This is her first World Cup race on this track. She's only slid here a couple of times. Third fastest starter with a 521, 522 is another electric getaway. Comes out of corners here, had a big toe, but it seemed to work for her. She's got the second fastest speed out of corner one. So if she can be quiet on the sled for the next couple of corners, we can see the six hundredths of a second disappear. Well, she's a good starter, Greg, but what she showed in Altenburg last week was she really can drive. She feels the ice well. 14 hundredths of a second back, third fastest speed through the reprisal, so she's got a chance here. She needs to have a really clean bottom of the track. She's cleaner through eight and nine than her teammate, but down on speed just a little bit. Yeah. Slowest so far. We talked about the battle between the Russian athletes. If they only get two sleds in the games, who goes? Well, this is Kanakina trying to put herself back up in the order. Four tenths back for Tarari Chenkova and just one hundredth quicker than her previous run. I think the track's got more time in it than she showed. Yeah, I think that a couple of things there. I think that she had a couple of deficiencies down the track that really cost her. I also think that her teammate, Kanakina, uh, probably shouldn't have been that far back. As we saw, she threw down the third, what would have been the third fastest run of the first heat. But it, it was the single worst run of Kanakina's career here in World Cup. And Tarari Chenkova has not raced here in World Cup before. She's actually only had three race weekends on this track in her life. Kanakina's done seven World Cups alone. So that lack of experience is what catches you out in the end. You fall into all the old hazards that the old hands know about and still fall into, by the way. So, Yulia Kanakina leads after the first four sleds. Fifth out is Nicole Silveira of Brazil. 16th best starter, 16th best at the finish. And her advantage over Kanakina, three hundredths of a second. And she may well give away two tenths in the start. Kanakina started 520. 546, 26 hundreds behind at the start. A little bit slower than her first heat, still has that skid out of corner zero. She's so new to this track though. I mean, yeah. she, I think she's doing a really nice job. You know, solved the top 20 first race here in a World Cup that is absolutely stacked. I think we saw four track records broke in the first heat. So uh, yeah. yeah, there's some heat in the field. And has never raced here in Winterberg before. So she just know where the track is, where the hotel is, where anything is. Well, she's got mind. the fastest speed through the middle of the track, though, yeah. so that's a good way to come she back does. for the second heat. Fastest speed through the bottom, too, You're going out of turn nine. Now, this is where the speed really comes. 98 kilometers an hour, smooth through turn 11. Fool me once, that's all right. She will not fool her twice. Fastest speed at the bottom. Bringing it back. Well, she's going to be third at the line. Uh, oh, second at the line, ahead of Tororichenkova. So again, Yuna Kanakina continues to move up the order, but a 57-41, 900 quicker than her previous heat. So that is a PB. If it's your first time ever at the track, no matter how, what you do, it's a PB, but that was a, a better run. That's her fastest of the week. This is the, the only thing I'd really pick apart was that right there. I know it doesn't look like much, but there was that little bit of a skid there. And when you were down two tenths on the start, it kind of doubles that down. The rest of this run is fantastic. Good speed through the splits all the way down, but she got beat in the you know start ramp and corner zero. But the rest of the run is fantastic. Nicole's turned into a great little pilot and uh, yeah. she's got a lot of opportunity in front of her. Yeah, what a season she is having. Nicole Severa lies second, Yulia Kanakina leads, five down, 15 to go. 15th off the first of our two heats, race for the Women's Skeleton World Cup here in Winterberg, Germany. Lin Wei Yang of China started 18th fastest, drove herself into 15th. She was 21st in the only World Cup she started here. That was two seasons ago when the Chinese were traveling. Her World Cup best result has been a pair of 16ths. 539, best her first start by six hundredths of a second. Third fastest speed through the turn one speed check. So her thing now is she just has to be quiet on the sled and let it run through here, which she's doing. 
and she's in PB territory in her first run. That's got to give us some kind of confidence on this track. It's only her second visit here. She's 1800s behind Kanakina, but she could still put herself into second place. Couple of early entrances in there, but she threads the needle going into turn nine. Fourth fastest speed though, she's down a quarter of a second on the wrong side of the track going into turn 11. Handles it well, doesn't panic. Only 1600s back, she's half off the sled though into the final corner. Let's take a look at that again, because she was definitely not well placed on the sled. 57.36, a fraction slower than her first run, but that will see her no worse than 16th, and that will equal her World Cup best results. I need to get Yulia a heavier coat. She's going to be yeah. there in a minute. That was a hot run from her. <clears throat> Well, out of 13, looked like she really got thrown off the sled. So she came into turn 11. You heard me say she's on the wrong side of the track. So that causes the little waves that we saw there, built some late pressure in turn 13, Ooh. and then she hits the on take of turn 14. Now we said the bump is all right, but uh, that, that is, when you drop a knee MotoGP <laughs> style, that is not how you turn into the corner. Well. In that transition, she got thrown up and landed on the edge of the saddle before settling back into the sled. So, 14 to go. Here's last year's winner, obviously. I mean, what? Elena Nikitina, the winner here from Tina Herman and Janine Flock last year. 14th place off the second best start. She didn't pop the groove or anything, didn't crash. What on earth happened to her first run? Oh, oh, wow. There's some guys that would have liked to have that start earlier in the day. Great it's start from Yuli. Who we're talking to. <laughs> wow, not Yuli. Apologize. It's Alina. 3,300's up. Uh, wow. Those fired up. 5.12 was her start record from 2017's race. It's now 5.07. Fast so she is obviously furious with herself, Greg, off that first heat. I mean, yeah. Start record Mind by you. a lot. Fastest speed yeah. through the middle. Third fastest speed at the bottom. Almost four tenths. It'll be four tenths, I think, here. 4100s yeah. and pulling away. Somebody should get her Second attack. best speed. Silvera with the best speed at the bottom and a new track record. Here we go. 56.74. That's what it's going to take. Start record. Billy Bullman's going to have a heart attack. Somebody <laughs> calm that man down a little, the track announcer. So, wow. Start record, track record. Yeah, baby. Well, she saw her teammate, Alexander Chechikov, win this morning with a track record. Is that enough? That's two tenths quicker than anybody went in the first heat. And there were five start records in the first heat. And she almost popped the groove. Yeah, but it worked for 507. Mm. Great, great start. But this is something that Alina's got a lot better at, and that's building speed late. Anytime you're having the fastest uh, speed of the heat in sectors of the track, you're doing something right. And she, I have a sneaking suspicion, is going to move up. 2400s quicker than anybody has been before on this track. That's Unbelievable. Well, 100 ahead of her off what was a really good looking run, Jackie Narricott of Australia. Third out of the start shed. She had good eyes to work with. 5-4-0 her start. And she has a 100 advantage as she leaves the line. 5.45, so just slightly slower than Nicotina on the start. Yeah, 3,800 slower than Nicotina on the start. <laughs> But everybody is going to be slower than Nikitina on the start. The question now is not what Elena Nikitina does, it's what Jackie Narakot can do versus Kanakina, versus Lynn, versus Silvera, the sleds who were behind her. Yeah, the race within the race, although she's got Look the, the speed. fastest speed. Look at that. This track has got some quickness in it today. Wow. I don't know if she can pull back 6,800s to the bottom, but fastest speed's a good way to try. Well, it's not about Nikita, is it? It's about everybody else who's coming up, if they can produce the pace as well. A little wild looking there. run. 
Only six fastest at the bottom. 57-42, 57-51. A little slower in the second heat for Jackie Maricott. So Elena Nikitina stays in the lead, and it's so tight, Jackie drops four spots. Absolutely. Okay. Pretty solid run, though. I mean, once again, really hard to go against the huge start record and big drive from the Russian <laughs> counterpart. I mean, yeah. we, we really are being nitpicky here. You had, she had a great run. You know that because at one point she had the fastest speed on the track on the exit of Kreisel. Comes in a little yeah. early here. The the, uh, the flop out of 13, 14 that we've talked about all day. I think she hit the camera guy with a piece of ice. So nice yeah. shot there. Well, she was looking up. Her best result here is a top 10 finish. She was a tenth away from 10th spot. And instead, she has slid backwards. Now, what about Megan Henry of the USA? Let's see what she has got. Didn't race World Cup last year. Two years ago, though, she was in seventh place on this track. And she also raced the World Championships here back in 2015. When surely she was only knee high to a grasshopper. Oh, she still is. <laughs> Meg's going to come find you. 534, so two, <laughs> 200 slower than her first start. But a great start time for her. Fourth fastest through that turn one checkpoint. So she put herself in position to be successful in the top third of the track. So this we'll watch that. Edge was was so close together, Greg. She was 200 ahead of Lynn and Nikita, 100 ahead of Jackie Narakot. So, you know, we had four sleds in what's effectively a dead heat. Well, she's got the fastest speed through the middle of the track, so the track's got plenty in it. Good looking lines here, threads the needle through turn eight, nine. Fastest speed through turn nine, she's bringing it back 2,900s. I don't know if she has enough track, but she's trying. Quicker than Nicole Silvera all the way down here. Silvera had the highest speed. Actually, that's a couple of clicks below Silvera, but at the line, second spot. Well, I think we have to take Nikita out of this equation. She should not have been hanging around in the middle sort of 10 to 15 group. Megan Henry, that is a good run from her, though. Now, let's see how that moves her up the order. She looks like she's had a good day in Winterburn. Yeah, I mean, that's a solid run for Meg. Good start, solid run. She's checking the boxes to accomplish the goal for the season, doing a great job. She had great speed down the track. You know, I started, Megan and I started skeleton one week apart. And Megan's nemesis, is she, when she was a newer slider, is building speed late. Uh, she has found speed, I mean, <laughs> Dance moves are questionable still. Love you, Meg, but... <laughs> what, yours as well? Yeah. Oh, mine are worse, so she, by far. <laughs> she sashays off at the top of the ice is Belgium's Lil Kim, Kim Marmons. A tenth of a second in hand over the leader, Elena Nikitina. And that's going to evaporate pretty quick. She started 5.32 in the first heat. She needs to be in the teens to try and stem the damage. 5.30, so she does improve it. A little toe action on the exit of turn zero, but fourth fastest speed through there. Okay, you're you're in the mix at this point. Also, big shout out. That's a nice looking helmet. Really nice looking helmet. And another product of the German training uh, camps over her first few years as a slider. She slid with the German team, go to school in Berchtesgaden. Seventh best speed though at the Kreisel, that's not good. Falling back a little bit, 26 to 3200s back, still second ranked behind Nicotina. Clip going into nine, that won't help, only the fifth fastest speed as the bottom drops out of the track. Yeah, that's going to see a little bit of more ground. 14. Head up, she's running at speeds that she's not comfortable with. And across the line, drops a couple of spots. 57-2-2 the run, so Megan Henry does not lose a place. She will remain no worse than 12th. And Kim Marmons no worse than 13th. She's ahead of Yulia Karakina, but she was looking as well at moving up into the top 10. Kelly Curtis in 10th was only a hundredth faster. So you're going into turn nine there, clip on the wall that just knocks the sled down. So it pushes the pressure around. That means you have late height, which means you really have to drive the sled on the entrance of turn 11 to make sure it doesn't compound on itself over and over. You can go late, later, latest, and then you get the big flop out of 13. That's what you're trying to avoid. 
And she had her first podium in the World Cup earlier this season. There's a, a woman who has had plenty, our race leader, Elena Nikitina. 10 down, 10 to go with a new start record and a crushing track record. Nikitina is the leader. Well, Greg, let's just have a little think about Nikitina's start record alone. 5.12 it was. It has been for four years. She sliced not 100th, but 500s out of it to a 5.07 start. That's one thing. But then the track record this morning was a 57.26. It is now a 56.74. That is half a second quicker than anybody has ever gone on this track before. Half a second in this sport that's measured in hundreds for a very good reason. That's an astonishing second run from Elena Nikitina. Yeah, this is the day that uh, sli sliding dreams are made of. First of all, the sun came out in Winterberg, so, you know, that's something yeah, to write home about. That. Second of all, I mean, you can just look at the ice. Look at the sheen and the polish on it. You can, you don't have to be an expert in skeleton to know that this track is lightning right now. And I'm uh, the question is, how far can it go? I, I mean, I could, I could see somebody, you know, chopping off even more time. There's a lot of firepower left to come in this race. Well, there is, and they've all got quite a sizable first heat advantage over Nikitina, but they're going to need it because she has gone 2,400s quicker than even the leader went in the first heat. So the leader has got to improve by a quarter of a second just to win by a hundredth. When do you ever improve by a quarter of a second in one run? I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> and, and yet, Nikitina's first run... She didn't finish upside down. She didn't pop the groove. She didn't hit everything in sight. It just wasn't quite there. I mean, this track is an astonishing place for exposing minuscule variations in line, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is, we've seen so many sleds today that have looked like they were quick and then weren't. Winterberg, Germany, race four of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup. Ten sleds to go in 10th place. Kelly Curtis of the USA on her first World Cup race here. Previous best in World Cup, ninth in Innsbruck a couple of weeks ago. And the current leader is Elena Nikitina coming up from a lap just of 14th place in the first heat. Kelly with a 538 getaway, so 100 slower than her first heat, but sixth fastest to the first speed check on the exit at turn one. So she's fourth on the timing charts right now. Of course, this group of ladies is really tight. There's not a lot of room. Oh, that clip going into that corner is not going to help her cause. I say that, but she's got the fastest speed through Chrysler. So what do I know? Why am I even... I don't even... I, fastest speed... Well, we're, right now yeah. she's got a run going she's back up to ahead second of, 29 seconds back ahead of teammate megan henry who is in second place at the moment behind nikitina and she's closing on the leader she's not going to get there but she's going to be very close 5708 that's a huge run that is 2600 faster 2400 faster than her first heat and that is the equal fourth fastest ever run down this track. She has not raced here in World Cup before Kelly Curtis. She was here once three seasons ago. So one of two things happen here, or maybe a combination of both. A, the track is getting even faster, or B, Correct. sometimes she's just so loose, and even with a couple of little scrubs here and there, she allowed the sled just to build speed um, yeah, I, I, Correct. I, I have both. no words. <laughs> it is both. And no wonder she's got a big smile on her face. She lies second with eight to go, nine to go. Valentina Margaglio of Italy. Well, she's had a great start to the season so far. Fastest starter in the first heat with a 5.15. When Elena Nikitina started 5.20. The track record, Valentina, I'm sure you're very well aware, is now 5.07 seconds. Does she get close? Or did Nikitina just turn on the turbo? 5.14, it's still a big push. Solid. 
push from Valentina. Second fastest speed, only to uh, Alina going through turn two. So she's in the mix. Green numbers right now, 600s ahead. She needs to be super quiet and relaxed and trust that the sled knows what it's doing to the top of the track. Ooh, working and skidding a little hard. Only the seventh best speed into the prize. All that lead will evaporate. Yeah, we're going to see red numbers probably at the next checkpoint or close to it. 600s back, so it is falling. Not quite back yet. 10 fastest speed 20th. out of turn nine. 20th, 11th, and 11th in her previous three races here. Only 200 back, but the speed's not great. She will be second at the line. She is second at the line. 57.02. That would have left her in the silver medal position in the first heat. Yeah, can't be mad about that. Solid looking run, great push. You know, it's a great result, especially considering the stress that must have been coming after, you know, losing the sled last week and, and crashing in Altenburg. Um, you know, to quote Top Gun, good recovery, Mav. Yeah. <laughs> nice stuff from Valentina Margalio. Yeah, these are good looking lines. Man, that track looks good. It almost makes me want to go take a run. <laughs> Almost. You see her, got a little bit of tension in the sled. You see that the top leg is flexing. That's a, just a solid run from her. Guaranteed top 10, her best ever result here in Winterberg. Next up, Jacqueline Lurling, hometown queen. This is her home ice. Two of her 12 World Cup wins have come on this track. Two of her nine World Cup silver medals have come on this track as well. She lies tied for seventh with the other slider who calls Winterberg home, Hannah Neiser, who comes up next. Are they in medal contention? They're 27 hundredths off the lead. The answer is, on this track, yes, they very well might be, but for Nikitina. What she does here, 5.56, a little bit quicker than her first heat start time. 49 hundreds slower than Nikitina in the start. This is back three tenths of a second, make it five tenths of a second. That's usually what happens, It'll almost double up. Now the question is, where does she stop the bleeding and where does she start bringing it back? It should be this checkpoint if she has a chance to overhaul. It is, she brought back a tenth. So fastest speed, big speed through the middle. First 94 mile, or kilometer an hour we've seen through the Kreisel. She has a chance if she's clean into nine. She is Whoa. fast to speed again. Two tenths back, she is coming. 62 miles an hour there. Top speed at the bottom will be 130 high. She's 100 behind, she's gonna take the lead. 131.7, 81 miles an hour. 81 miles an hour, yes! That is a wow. big run from the German. Huge speed down the track. I did not think she could overcome that big of a deficit on the start. And uh, I think she's very happy that I was yep. wrong. 100th off the track record that's just been set by Elena Nikitina. She very nearly matched Nikitina, starting nearly half a second slower. How is that possible? <laughs> yeah, just, I, I, I'm, 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 wa I'm watching and just admiring the run. Like I, I caught myself Absolutely. like, wow, that, that's textbook. If you, if you're a young slider, you want to know how to go down to Winterberg, just, you know, watch that clip about 500 times because she absolutely yeah. nailed it. Well, we've seen Jacka. What about Hannah? 21st start. She starts 800 or so quicker than Lurling. This needs to be a track record as well to stay in the lead. 548 getaway, so she's fired up faster than her first start, which was a 553. Eighth fastest through that first split. The Germans are the exceptions, though. I mean, everybody else has to live and die by that first split. The Germans are like, yeah, I'm just gonna get on the gas later, it's all right. Building the lead. Don't forget, she and Lerling were tied. They both slide here, this is their home track. Hannah slides for BSC Winterberg, the local club. Second best speed to Lurling, this is gonna be tight. 
Red numbers, she needs to be perfect at the bottom. Little clip of 4.9, that is going to hurt her. She's down a kilometer an hour on speed to lulling. This part of the track is pretty flat and about to go uphill. She's gonna have to find the warp zone in 14. Falling back more, quarter second back. Big speed, she'll still be ahead of Nikita. No, she doesn't, she drops behind Margalio. 57.07, well, any other day, that would have been an epic run. That is the fifth fastest trip ever down this track. Unfortunately, the four quicker ones were all today. Yeah, that was a... Uh, that shows you how quick turn eight is. She comes in eight to nine. She clipped on the right side, a pretty aggressive tap. It doesn't look like much. You see her actually going into the Kreisel up near the woodwork. I missed that in the live picture, so she's covering more meters that way. Plus, she doesn't build as much centrifugal force. We see her here through turn 11. At this point, though, the damage is done. Hitting the wall between eight and nine really cost her her speed. So Jacqueline Lurling leads six to go. Here is the fabulous sled art of Canada's Jane Channel. Fourth fastest starter, sixth at the bottom, 1900s off the lead. And she has 800s in hand over Jacqueline Lurling. Again, we need near track record pace from everybody now just to stay where they were. Jane had a 524 in the first heat, 524 again. Now what Jane did better than pretty much everybody was this section of the track. She does it very well again. She carries so much speed through corner zero and corner one compared to her peers. It really helps her. It pushes her out to almost a six tenths of a second lead. That is huge. Only problem is Lowling put on a clinic at the bottom of the track. 4,700, it's already coming back and only the 13th best speed through the Chrysler. She's going to have to do something to stop the bleeding through the bottom. That clip on the wall is not gonna help. That's the same thing that Hannah just did. Yeah. Too much skidding around. She hasn't got the control she needs. She may be loose for speed, but she drops behind. Jacqueline Lurling, Elena Nikita only 1,700 back. She's gonna drop three spots here, maybe four, six spots. Oh. Disastrous second heat for Jane Channel. Bronze medalist here in 2015. She can't believe it. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Jane. It just seemed like the top third of the track was right on, and then coming into Chrysler, it got a little bit off. We're gonna see here, eight to nine. There's that clip on the wall. That does not look like much, but now you're on the wrong side of the track. It pulls the pressure back in the corner, and now you have to drive a ton at the bottom of the track. And when you're driving in the flat portion of the track, that's bad. And you're down on speed and going uphill, and that's worse. Yeah, you can see the runner marks left in the ice, and that's not easy. Five to go, four to go, five to go. We have a tie for fourth place. Last year's bronze medalist, the third of three consecutive bronzes for Janine Flock. She's tied with Katie Ulender, 12 hundredths of a second off the lead. And they were 15 hundredths up on Jacqueline Lurling. Can she keep her nose in front of the German? 551, so just a smidge slower than her first 548 off the start, but a much better run from corner zero to corner one. So she's fourth in uh, fourth in the rankings, right? I'm oh, sorry, no, she's in the green numbers right now. Got two tenths in the bank over Lowling, but she's gonna need a good bottom of the track in order to maintain that. Good thing about Janine, she is perfectly capable of doing just that, although it's going away at 1100s. Second best speed though, that's very promising into the Chrysler. Let's see what she can do with the bottom half of this Winterberg track. Second run through Second there. Second best speed to Lurling, but a full kilometer an hour down. She's in the red. Lurling 132 nearly at the bottom. Does she stay in second place? Does she drop behind Nikitana? Oh, she does drop behind Nikitana. Lurling leads. There are still four to go though. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Lowling had the best bottom of the track probably that we're going to see all day. Nicotina had the best top of the track we're probably going to see all day. 
Janine had a great run, but there's just so much firepower between those two. It's really hard to overcome that. And we haven't yet got to Tina Herman either, the, the real speed queen on this track. You see her going through Kreisel. No major dramas there. Same thing in 11. She looks cool, calm, collected, relaxed. She's got that Austrian bullet form. You see one quick steer there. It's exactly what you need to do. Uh, you're just going up against a big start record and then, you know, a, the, the, against the track record. Yeah. Okay, Katie Ulander, a winner on this track in the 2006-07 season. Let's see what she can produce. She did race here in last year's World Cup. 13th place finish. She's in fourth. Two hundredths of a second out of a medal here. She was bragging about her start time in the first heat. 5.37 this time versus a 5.34 in the first heat. Still a competitive start time. Sixth passes through that first speed chap. Now, Kaylee is a, or sorry, Katie is a wily veteran. She knows how to build speed late as well. She's got a four tenths gap right now. If anybody can hold on to it, it's Katie Uland. Well, just for record's sake alone, it would be a phenomenal achievement. Her last medal on this track, 2007-8 season, it would be a 15-year gap between medals in Winterberg if she gets one today. How about that? Down a kilometer She's and still out in the green. turn nine. We'll see. 2300 up. Oh, 800s. Learning is going to lead at the end. She doesn't have the speed. Will she be in second? She is in second by 700. Not yet out of the medals. Learning, Ulander, Nikitina, three to go. Is there still speed in the track? Or are we, I mean, the athletes are still going quicker than they did in their first heat. 56.97 I mean, to 57.10 for Katie. Is it enough for a medal? Run, fastest run ever down the track, so it's really hard yeah. to complain about it. I mean, I think even she's saying that right now, like, what do you do? That That is as good as I can yeah. be on this day, and that's perfectly fine. We see her here on the start ramp. Looks like she had a, a nice entrance in the corner zero. You want to take that bump early because you don't have to steer very much. Yeah. I mean, th that's that's textbook. That's really a nice job. She just doesn't have the 507 start that Nick Tina had to go with. And that run faster than anything in the first heat. She would have been the leader in the first heat with that run. So How next up. Can it go? I, I know, I know. <laughs> in the medals, is this where Mimi Renevers 21-22 season starts to turn the corner. She has looked really like a bit of a lost soul so far this year. She's doing all the same things. They're just not having the same result. Is this a chance with a medal potential? 529, so a little bit quicker than her first heat, but the big toe between corner zeros and corner one. So that line looks nice. really nice. But that hurts on Nine speed. Nine best speed, though. Yeah. So we'll see green numbers Half here. Half a second up. going to come back. Well, learning just gets quicker speed. and quicker and quicker all the way down the track. She's got to be super quiet on the sled. Third fastest speed, which is still pretty good. The problem is Lolling had the best speed, and that's who you're, yeah. I mean, you're technically in front of, but Lolling's chasing you down right now. 33 hundredths of a second, so it's coming down about a tenth per, th uh, per split. And a full kilometer an hour slower. 18 hundredths left, the late block, 128.8, only the eighth best speed. Is she going to be in front? Is she in the medals? She is in the medals. Guaranteed 56.89. The fastest first heat run was a 56.98. The track Great record run. this morning was a 57.25. She has never slid this track as fast as she has done in two trips today in her life. Great looking run. Oh, that puts right. her in the medals, guaranteed. That's a huge way to uh, to get your season you know on track and, and get pointed in the right direction as we head toward shine at the end of the year but a, a fantastic run little nitpicky things but it's the fastest this track's ever been so you know what do i know her season nice. so far 14th 11th 18th and now no worse than third 
Well, Tina Herman loves a bit of pressure. Let's see if she can respond here. 600s to win her third race on this track. She's got to beat Kimberly Boss, and she's got to beat Mimi Reneva, who laid down a quicker run by nearly a tenth, over a tenth, than Tina Herman managed in the first heat. How much more is left in the track? 5.53, so a little bit start. slower. Yeah, 15th best speed, but, you know, German, so it'll come back late. I have full faith. Yeah. We'll check what the gap is. It was 1,800s at the first time split, 2,500s, that's to be expected. That's start difference. Now, if it's 2,500s here again, she stopped the bleeding. If it's higher, she's in trouble. If it's lower, she has a chance. It's lower, she's bringing it back, 2,200s. Second, Second best speed. speed, that's about where Mimi was. Mimi was 99 flat, 99.6, second best speed, quicker than Reneva. So this Does she should have enough see track? her. Yeah, she'll be red in the final corner. She could be green out of the final corner. Second best speed, she'll lead at the line. She does lead at the line. One to go, and Tina Herman is the leader. Great run there from Tina. You knew it was coming. She needed every every inch of the track to get there, but uh, you just watch the trend. I mean, she brought it back. It was 25, 22, 16, 6, and then four, 400s in the lead. Fantastic run from the German. So here last on the year, start ramp. gold the year before. What's she going to end up with today? Oh, Working the, the toe a little dancing bit. Into the first corner. Yeah. She worked to well, keep maybe it off there's the wall a, there. Yeah, slightly better way into corner zero. She's in a little late. But Tina Herman is the leader with one, two, go. And the final slider wears the yellow vest of the World Cup points leader, the Netherlands' Kimberly Boss. So coaching from home this weekend, Kristen Bromley. I reckon his heart rate is the highest in the entire camp right now. Kimberly Boss led by just four hundredths of a second in the first heat. But in the first heat, she was the fastest woman ever on this track. Can she be again? 529, she's faster than the, her first heat by a hundredth of a second. Fourth fastest through the first split. So she's got a good chance here. She's got 28 hundredths of a second in the bank. Normally you'd say that's a lifetime as it stretches out to four tenths, but Tina had a great bottom of the track. Can Kim hold on? Still in the green, 4200. She's maintaining the lead. Fourth best speed into the Chrysler, so she will lose time to Herman all the way down here. How much does she lose versus how much ice is left? 3600s going through turn 11. She looks nice and relaxed. Bunch of your tickets to the Olympics will do that to a slider. 2800s, good speed. I she's think gonna she's going to hold on and get the W. She's going to win it. Gold and a brand new track record. The fastest woman ever, 5670. Can we just take a look at that? The track record this morning was 5726. That's 56 hundredths, half a second. That is like taking wow. half a second out of the Olympic 100 meter record. That's insane. Nobody does that on a track so well known. Well, congratulations Absolutely. to Kimberly Boss and congratulations to the ice crew here in Winterberg. What a track they have produced. Absolute clinic Kim put on today quality start time, but her driving was absolutely fantastic. Doggy, that's not the worst thing in the Two world to have with the leaders. of the three box. fastest runs ever down this track. That is insane. Kimberly Boss extends her lead at the top of the World Cup rankings. And, oh yeah, by the way, as well as being insanely the fastest woman ever down this track, that's her first ever World Cup gold. Well, it matches her yellow vest really nicely. Once again, great work for Kim all the way down the track. And, uh, well, she gets to hold on to that yellow vest for at least another week. 
Yes. Well, I imagine that our Dutch crew in the truck are going uh, apoplectic with delight as well. It's Katie Ulander offering her congratulations. Kimberly Boss, the winner. Tina Herman beaten into silver. Mimi Reneva takes the bronze ahead of Jacqueline Lurling. Katie Ulander and Elena Nikitina coming from 14th to 6th, literally with a rocket. What a run she had as well in the second heat. So Kimberly extends her World Cup points advantage over, well, no longer Elena Tararichenkova in second or Nikitina in third, I don't think. Tina Herman may well have overhauled both of them. There is your finishing order. Some fantastic personal bests today and crazy speeds that nobody has ever seen here before. And Kimberly Boss, if there's a better way to win a World Cup medal than leading both heats with new track records in both heats by crushing margins, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And you've got the pitch no on the podium. <laughs> we're in, well, we're in the Dutch Alps. It's home for her. Kimberly Boss leads. Nikitina still in second. Tina Herman up to third in the rankings. Janine Flock up to fourth. Kim Marmons up to fifth. And Alina Tararichenkova, who came in here in second spot, slips a fraction down to sixth position. Katie Ulender in seventh ahead of Nikitina, Nyza, and Jane Channel, rounding out the top ten. And that is four of our eight World Cups down. One more to go before the Christmas break. And that will be next week in Altenburg. So they had better sharpen up their driving skills again to get the best out of that Saxon track. Well, Greg, that was quite some race wasn't it altenburg is renowned as a difficult track to drive this is a good track to come and learn your skills on but not at the speeds they were doing today insane stuff my thanks to greg west for the words of wisdom today thanks to to you for joining us i'm martin haven on behalf of all of us and the IBSF TV crew, thanks for being with us. We will be back tomorrow morning for Four Man Bob, the double four man weekend. Meanwhile, we salute our newest gold medalist, Kimberly Boss, here in the fastest race ever in Winterberg. See you tomorrow for lots more action.